Well, the wait's over. We have another glimpse of, at, of an interstellar object that has become a public obsession. NASA has just unveiled high-resolution photos of the comet known as 3I Atlas. The comet is only the third known object from outside our solar system to pass through our solar system. Some say it could be an alien mothership. Moments ago, NASA said this. Right away, of course, NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office established, they studied it, and they established that 3I Atlas is not a danger to Earth. In fact, it's at least twice, a, twice as far away as the distance between the Earth and our Sun. Lucy was 240 million miles away from 3I Atlas, which is circled in the center, when its high-resolution LaLaurie camera caught the comet. You can see the comet's coma, the fuzzy halo of gas and dust surrounding 3I Atlas, and its tail, a smudge extending to the right of the comet. Director of the Institute for Theory and Computation at Harvard University, Dr. Avi Loeb, joins me. I look at that picture and all those dots look the same to me. So tell me, you know, why, tell, tell me about this picture that we just saw showing the, uh, showing the comet. Well, there were no new insights as to the properties of this uh, object uh, from this uh, NASA press conference. Uh, uh, they pretty much uh, repeated things that we already knew. Uh, we knew about the Hubble data, the uh, Webb telescope data, um, and then the new data, for example, the image from the high-rise uh, uh, camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that should have been the uh, sharpest that we have, you know, just show the fuzzy ball of light uh, similar to the Hubble image that we already saw before. Um, and uh, there was some data from MAVEN on Mars that uh, indicated hydrogen, but uh, these are details. Uh, nothing in the uh, big picture changed. And, you know, um, the point is that the presenters uh, should have uh, emphasized what we don't understand rather than insist about what is familiar. And, uh, uh, you know, as I say, the, the foundation of science is the humility to learn something new rather than the arrogance of expertise. That's what the public resonates with. Uh, and, you know, I pointed out 12 uh, anomalies about this object. The most important among them is the size. You know, it's this object is an a million times more massive than the first interstellar object, a thousand times more massive than the second interstellar object. And uh, why, well, why didn't let, we see let millions? Let me ask you about th that. Yeah. So you talk about those interstellar objects, and I was doing a little research, and this is the third one. This one right, right. now is the third one. To, the, uh, well, and the first one was in 2017. The second one is 2019. Are you telling me that none ever happened to, before 2017? And if none ever happened before 2017, how come we're suddenly now getting three in eight years? No, no. There were many that passed before. It's just that our tel we didn't have uh, survey telescopes that uh, are capable of detecting them. These survey telescopes were designed to find near-Earth objects because the Congress tasked NASA in 2005 to find 90% of all objects bigger than a football field that may come close to Earth because of the risk that they pose if they were to impact the Earth. So as a result of that, over the past decade, yes. there were survey, survey telescopes that allowed us to find these objects by chance. Okay. Yeah. All right. If if if, the, if Congress gave the wants us to wants you to investigate, wants NASA to investigate something to find out if it's going to impact the Earth, what do we what can we do anyway? I mean, if it's coming here, I mean, like if, if let's say this particular comet were going to hit the Earth, and we just like should have buckle up and just or, I mean, what what would happen? No, if we're dealing with rocks or icy rocks, we can deflect them if we catch them early enough. Just a small nudge could actually make them pass uh, uh, far from Earth and. Um, so that's the trick, and in fact, there was a mission called DART that uh, not, where that NASA demonstrated that uh, colliding a spacecraft with an object can deflect it significantly. So that's possible. I mean, there are various methods to deflect them, but this method of uh, you know preventing a rock from hitting the Earth does not work for a technological object because it can maneuver, or it may have an intent, uh, or it may have uh, abilities that we cannot cope with you know it's just like ants in the crack of a pavement looking at a biker that passes nearby they cannot do much about it and that may be the situation when we encounter alien technology all right we're going to know more in about a month or it comes closer to closest to the earth in about a month right i think that's what you exactly. told me last time
on uh, December 19th. And in the coming weeks, we'll have a throve of data, a flood of data that would be very helpful at uh, figuring out all the properties. I mean, we already saw in recent weeks uh, seven jets coming from this object, some towards the sun, some away from the sun. And uh, we haven't seen yet a very uh, a detailed image from a large telescope, but I expect that in the coming weeks. So by the holidays, I expect us to know much more about this object. And let's just hope that it will not deliver any unwanted gifts to Earth. That's all. Okay, what's the unwanted gift? I, I'll bite on that one. Like, oh, what unwanted well, gift? Well, uh, okay, so there are two possibilities. If it's a natural object, it could, for example, fragment. Uh, there could be pieces of it that make their way closer to Earth. Or if it's a mothership, a technological mothership, you could have mini probes that are released and reach close to Earth. So we need to monitor whether there is any unusual activity near Earth. We have a lot of uh, eyes on the sky. Uh, and also near Mars, there are orbiters there, there are rovers there. Just check for unusual activity, any objects that arrived that were not there to start with. You know, it's, it's so fascinating to listen to this. <clears throat> it makes me think, I wish I hadn't gone to law school. I should have gone, because I mean, it's just endless. Anyway, it's and I think, it's you know, never I, too late, uh, Greta. I'll be delighted to uh, work with you if you wanted. Well, I think, uh, I think I first need to go back and try, you know, working on my uh, high school chemistry. I was a little bit... Oh, no, you, you can come there. to my class. I teach some of the basics uh, on this, and it, it won't take you long uh, to figure things out. Uh, you know, yeah. the, the beauty of science is that it's not up to people to decide what nature is. We just need to observe nature and figure it out. It's like a detective story. So it's much better than politics because in politics, uh, you get a lot of misinformation. And <laughs> Indeed. Again. All right. Well, I'm going to take you up on that class. You probably shouldn't have said that. I'll take you up on that. Dr. Yeah. Avi Loeb, thank you very much, sir. And I, I hope to see you on the 19th of December when we're talking about getting the closest to the Earth. Thank you, sir. I'll be delighted. Thank you.